Okay, James, welcome back to the WSOP. Thank you. What are you playing this year? What's your schedule? Well, I'm, somebody said to me how many events you're going to play. I said, I think I have 80, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 28 marked out. And they were laughing, but you know, you, 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 you schedule some things you want to play, and then if you're fortunate enough to be running good early, mm -hmm. you're not available to play them. So one of the big events I wanted to play was the Do 7 Triple Draw, but fortunately I was still in the deep day two of, of the last horse event. In fact, I've, I've, I've cashed in both horse events so far, mm -hmm. and I've had four caches. I've had a 73rd in Omaha 8 or better, 14th in Triple Triple Draw, and then 28th in 1500 horse, and 30th in the 3000 horse. So it's been kind of a nice run all of a sudden. So I, now I don't know, you know, I didn't expect to play in this, but I did this um, fun thing uh, called Stake Kings, which I'd never done before. Give my uh, fans kind of an opportunity to, you know, participate. You, they can stake you, you know, yeah. in it. And uh, and I said, look, just do small stakes, but you know, it'll add up, mm -hmm. and we'll try to do well for you. So I'm trying to play really well because I really want to win for them. You know, it'd be fun to win for them. So that's brilliant. And I noticed, like, you've been playing the WSOP for many years. Right. You play a lot of the mixed games. Why you, is that? Well, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. a very good question. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> question. Um, because of my, I had this other day job you may know about, mm -hmm. uh, where I used to, you know, do a lot of showbiz stuff. Um, I was acting, of course, and in Hold'em, uh, unfortunately, I would get in a situation where a lot of people would want to make bad calls to have a story to tell, mm -hmm. and it would, you know, be kind of frustrating. You think, oh, why would you make that terrible call? But you know, then they get on and tell everybody how they beat James Woods at Do Seven and so on. In mixed games, there's kind of no interesting story in saying, I bluffed James Woods on the second draw of Badoogie, you know. <laughs> People are, what? Doesn't mean anything. And also, I it just kind of, I, I love puzzles, I love crossword puzzles, and you know, all of, and, and mixed games are kind of like these interleave, oh, sorry, interleave puzzles where you try to figure out a hand, figure out where you are, um, um, almost in many ways, m much more so than in Hold'em. It can get a little boring when people tank for four minutes and so on. Mixed games are always in the hand. And when people come up to me and, you know, I say I'm in a hand, they go, you don't have any cards. I go, no, but I'm in a hand because I'm watching how they're playing that board face up with each other. You know, there's so much to observe in mixed games. And there's so many games. Yeah. And, and I think um, there's a wonderful player. I think he has the greatest tournament record of anybody in poker history is Miami John Cernudo. And we became friends. Uh, mainly because I observed him once, I didn't even know who he was, how he treated his elderly mother, and I thought, oh, that guy's a great guy, I want to meet him. We became friends, and he started coaching me on mixed games, and the first, I had never played Omaha 8 or better, and uh, he and a, another fellow named Abner, you know, said, well, you, you should play, you know, so I went and played one night, Omaha 8 or better, and the next day I played a tournament at, at the LAPC, the Los Angeles Poker Classic, and I won the tournament because I was so tight, you know, I just knew kind of the rules and a little bit of strategy that they both told me for, you know, half an hour, and um, I thought, wow, these games are really cool, you know, if you really, really focus on starting hand requirements and so on, you can do well. And it was really fun. To, it, I really recommend people play mixed games because you can really do well if you study them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was very blessed to have one of the best players in the world coach me. And then the first year that I played in the World Series since he coached me, I came fifth in Dealer's Choice, which for me was fantastic, yeah. you know. I mean, other people won prices, but you know, if you're not a professional poker <laughs> player to make mm -hmm. a final table in the hardest, I think the hardest, mm -hmm. the hardest tournament there is Dealer's Choice. It's 19 games, you have mm -hmm. to be able to play well. And uh, I was so excited to have had that um, success, and a lot of it came from just, you know, hard study, and there are great books out there, and you can watch online now. There's so much that anybody can do, and, and you know, you don't have to play big stakes where, you know, one hand, you're wiped out. It's, it makes games are great. Perfect, great. and one more question for sure. you. As someone who's come here many times already, what would be your one piece of advice for someone coming to the WSOP this year for the very first time? Okay, um, another excellent question. I would say, for more than anything else, and you hear it all the time, is money management. Mm -hmm. Now people say to me, well, you know, you have a career and you made a lot of money as an actor. And I said, yes, but when I come here, I come with a, a fixed budget. I use an app where I, I track every penny, how I'm doing, whether I'm winning and losing and so on. And I focus on the games 
where I feel I have the best chance to win. And the reason I did the Steak Kings thing, which was fun for me, is when I have other people's money, I take that very seriously. I'm not like somebody with other people's money. I, I really take it seriously. So I said to everybody, you know, just invest a little. Um, you have to then really truly assess yourself. Like I have a friend who's an excellent player, but he's not playing in horse today because he said, you know, hold him is not really a good game for me and uh, stud is not one of my better games. So I'm at a 40% disadvantage against the top players. This, these are the top mixing game players in the world, bar none. And, you know, you have to really know your your abilities. You know, like I even posted when I played in Deuce 7 No Limit, I said to my followers, I said, I'm not really very good at this game, so I'm just going to have fun, so don't invest in it, <laughs> you know. But, you know, on horse, I feel this is among my better games. You know, I'm still an amateur compared to, you know, these fabulous professionals. I mean, when you start to play with people of this caliber and you're an amateur, you just are amazed at their talent and their their understanding of the games. I mean, they're so smart and so good at what they do. And it's really a challenge and fun to do it, so. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for oh, talking to pleasure. us. And, and best of luck in, in the rest of it. Okay, thank you so much. And by the way, Poker News, follow Poker News. It's really fun. <laughs> they do a great job. You all do a wonderful job, so thank you so much. Thank you so okay. much. Our coverage of the WSOP is powered by Club GG.